Welcome back to another Codemasters video. Codemasters games for the Amstrad CPC. My name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. So yeah, trying to go for a full Amstrad collection for the Codemasters range. Which is going to prove to be difficult, I'm not going to kid myself. Um, I've got about 60 to 65 titles at the moment. I think the collection spans around 100 games. Again, slightly smaller than the Sinclair Spectrum and considerably smaller than the Commodore 64 sets. But like I said before, there's always difficult games to pick up within any subset you collect for. Doesn't matter what machine it is, to be fair. Some games will be easier to find on the C64, but there'll be certain C64 titles that are unique to that system and very difficult to track down. Now the vast majority of games I'm going to show you in this particular video are relatively easy to find and are cheap and cheerful. There's one game I showed in my previous video, which was one of those big box games, um, which unfortunately was incomplete. Now, a gentleman called Nick, who runs a site called CPC Game Reviews, which I'll leave a link in the description box below. Um, yeah, he reached out and said he had four titles for me if I was interested. So he kind of agreed a price and there they are in the collection. So yeah, a really good price. Um, bear in mind, some of these items are very difficult to find in their complete form. So what I'll do is I'll show you the particular games when I come to them. So it could be, I've definitely got two to show you in this video. The other two may turn up in subsequent videos at some point. So again, thank you very much, Nick, for reaching out and letting me know you've got those games. And yeah, thank you for doing them at a very good price. So yeah, so in terms of compilations, I'm finding it very difficult to track down compilations that are in good or great complete condition. Um, sometimes you see them on eBay, they're incomplete and quite expensive, so I'm not going to be going for those. So I still only have one cardboard box compilation to show, which I think I already showed in my pre previous video anyway, haven't I? So yeah, so we crack on. So the first game I've got is, uh, <laughs> yeah, what you'll find is I'll show you a pretty piss poor game and then I'll show you one that's a bit better. That's how it kind of seems to have worked out. Yeah, so first up we've got a game that I probably wouldn't have bought back in the day. And that game is... Professional Snooker Simulator. Um, very cheap and cheerful. Quite a common game to pick up. Um, I let the demo run uh, for you guys to have a look at because I didn't want to play the game. It would probably take me about half an hour just to learn how to play the game. But it's easier just to show you the demo, really. So the back of the old inlay this has to be or has got to be has got to be yes the best ever snooker simulator programmed by godwin graham bsc it follows exactly the rules of the famous tabletop game all the balls all the playability all the fun absolutely brilliant brilliantly realistic actual amstrad screenshots on the back awesome isn't it but again it personally wouldn't be something I would have picked up. I did have a few professional simulator games back in there on the Spectrum. I used to like Professional Ski Simulator, even though that was brutally hard. I actually quite liked it. But what I have enjoyed with these games is listening to the AY renditions of Beeper Chip Tunes. I've currently got a Spectrum Codemasters game on at the moment. And it's just got Beeper Chip music. So yeah, I quite like that element of it. And also like the games that are programmed specifically for the Amstrad. So they do look and run a lot quicker than the Sinclair Spectrum portovers. Yeah, that's Professional Sneaker Simulator. Next game is a decent little platformer. I'm not sure if this was the Oliver Twins' first outing on the Codemasters label. I don't know. And that game is... Super Robin Hood. Yeah very early game um, yeah very early game indeed actually now again it's nothing to look at it's a simple platformer lots of ladders you pick up energy you're picking up keys by the looks of it to go through different doors to access different parts of the level so yeah in this incredible platform game you play the role of Robin Hood and must rescue Maid Marion who has been locked away in Nottingham Castle contains stereo music which is interesting i didn't realize the amstrad cpc had stereo speakers 
It's all the sound, I think, is internal, isn't it? But yeah, Super Robin Hood, another basic game. I believe there are three Robin Hood titles on the Codemasters label. And one came out very, very late. I think the back end of 92, maybe even early 93. Now, the next game is probably another enjoyable title. My first impressions, though, weren't particularly great, because so I found it quite frustrating. Now, the game is, let me just unfold it a minute. The Hit Squad. <laughs> I love it. The Hit Squad. Yeah. Some of these Master, uh, Master Tronic games, Codemasters games, have very large inlays. And the later games always seem to have like little playing cards or little cards that feature Dizzy and his gang. Um, so I'm always half expecting one or two of them to fall out of the inlay. But yeah, they're very, very difficult to come by. Now, this is um, a platformer, kind of a shooty game as well. Um, the baddies come out of like little transport of things and they kind of bounce around the screen and get your bloody tits. You have got a gun though, so you can shoot them. Again, like Robin Hood, you, only, you can only seem to pick up health. Or pick up um, like a token it is, to use the transport to get to the next level. I found the game quite good. Choose your Street Fighter. Sexy Xena. High IQ Ace. Stack the Stealth Fighter. Or Slender but Deadly Zara. There you go. So you've got four characters to pick, which you do. They don't make any bloody difference, but there you go. That's the Hit Squad. I did actually quite enjoy it. It's frustrating, but I quite liked it. As the next game, it's one of those collect them up games that you could quite easily get lost. Not engrossed, but just lost. And this game is called... Death Stalker. Nice cover. I do like the cover of this game. Sword fighting action. Magic potions. That's it all, doesn't it? This game was done by a guy called Tony Warrener. Don't get me wrong, it looks good. It sounds really good. It's got a somber tune by David Whittaker. who seems to have made a lot of tunes for Codemasters. He's one of the most prolific uh, musicians, I think, back in the day on the old micros. But yeah, it's a wandering around game. Uh, I didn't play it for long. I got quite bored of it quite quickly. Um, I guess it's okay if you get stuck into it, but for me personally, yeah, smash the undead skeletons, hack and slay the grotesque orcmen, orcmen, with your sword of power, find the lost key of darkness and descend to the deeper dungeons, brilliant playability, that's Death Stalker. I'm sure they have someone from the Sun newspaper writing all those quotes. The next one is probably one of my favourite games in this pile. Not a bad game. Featuring Dizzy. That is uh, Quick Snacks. Very, very common title. Uh, it's a very good game, actually. Reminded me a bit of a game I played doing my ocean video called Eskimo Eddie. One of the levels you have to move blocks around. But yeah, Quick Snacks is very similar to, say, Pac-Man. You've got baddies obviously chasing you around this little maze. You pick up fruit. You can do it in a certain sequence, a bit like Bomb Jack. You do it in a certain sequence, you get more points. But graphically, yeah, it's, it's very colourful. It's a very nice game to play, I've got to say. I really enjoyed this. Um, but you do move the blocks around, but I'm not sure the blocks kill the baddies or what or well, you just move the blocks out of the way i don't know but yeah it's, it can be quite difficult especially if you want to get all the fruit in any particular sequence dizzy to the rescue yes the yeah, oliver twins done this as well i didn't realize the oliver twins also had done the dizzy spin-off games i always thought it was other different programmers really dizzy is back in this amazingly addictive game to be fair it's a good game definitely value for money Quite similar to the other one. What was the other game called? Fast Food. I did like that. I preferred Fast Food to that, but that's not a bad game. Now, this game is rather horrific. I tried playing it. Um, it's a bit of... Uh, it's very similar to, say, California games and how it looks or how it wants to look, but 
This game is called BMX Freestyle. The gameplay footage you're going to see in a second is my personal best, which was just outside the qualifying score that I needed. Um, they did advertise a lot of their games, didn't they, in the inlays? I, did, I do like how they presented their inlays, to be fair, Codemasters. They're very good. Now, this game was done by a gentleman called Peter Williamson. Again, music by David Whitaker. Um, again, it's, yeah, like I said, a bit like, a bit like a bit like California games, but rather than having skateboards and stuff like that, you've got a BMX. The first level that you come across is a level where you have to perform a wheelie. And you've got to do it for as long as possible. I think 40 seconds, I think, was the qualifying, or 40 points, I can't remember. I've got about 39.8. Um, but yeah, I did like it. Amazing freestyle action. Wheelie racing, tricks, ramp jumping, tricks, tracking, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's not good. I didn't like it. Maybe it's just because I'm not very good at these games. I don't know. As you kind of get older, you kind of lose a bit of patience, don't you? Even though you think you're more patient, you bloody well not. Now this one is, I, I like the look of this game. It graphically is nice. It looks like a Sinclair Spectrum port. There's a character in it that features in another one or two games by Dynamic. So I've got a feeling this may well be a re-release game. It certainly came out on the Amiga and it was called something completely different. It's a beat em up called Guardian Angel. Again, like I said, it looks nice. I just found it bloody hard. A lot of dynamic games are very challenging, aren't they? But yeah, let me know if this was definitely by Dynamic. I'm not 100% sure. It, just, it, it looks like the Freddy Hardest character, though. Yeah, clean up the crime ridden Manhattan docks. It's called Manhattan something on the Amiga. Oh, I can't remember what it's bloody called now. Fight off thugs. Fight off thugs wielding flick knives, iron bars, baseball bats, and worse. Tackle muggers, homicidal maniacs, and psychopaths. Yeah, I, I like it. It's just hard. I mean, it's typical punching, kicking, sideways scrolling, and beat them up. But yeah, it's just hard. I've got to say, though, who programmed it then? Yeah, it's dynamic. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's dynamic. But yeah, it's called something else. In Spain. Good game. It's hard. Right, next up we've got a decent game. Now, some people like this game and prefer this game to Afterburner. I found you spent more time in this game picking up parachutes or power-ups. And this one is called... MiG-29 Soviet Fighter Yeah, I have heard people mention this game before in their videos. I'm sure Ash81 before you has mentioned this game and so you preferred this to Afterburner I can probably see why but I never played Afterburner on the Amstrad so I don't know but I wasn't overly impressed um, but yeah, very similar to Afterburner you literally are shooting planes out of the sky I don't think you can die on the ground I don't think so but then you do spend a lot of time picking up power-ups like rockets, missiles, ammunition and health and stuff like that. But it says it's got incredible graphics, realistic aircraft, heat-seeking missiles, in-flight refueling, sidewinders and nuclear warheads. There you go. This game was done by Peter Williamson. Graphics by Neil Adamson. But yeah, don't get me wrong, it's a good game. It is good, but yeah, I mean, it probably had more of an impact on you back in the day. But yeah, I, I preferred Afterburner on a single Spectrum. Again, not one that I've played before. But yeah, no, I do like the old Codemasters branding. It's very, very effective. Our second to last game is a game that is very much like Bomb Jack. It actually plays really well. It's got lovely large graphics. Again, not sure this is a Spectrum port over because the graphics are very well defined. And this one is part of the other franchise which came out in the very early 90s called <laughs> Super Mario 
Super Seymour saves a planet. Now this is the more cheap and cheerful Seymour game. I think there's five Seymour games. And they do range from sort of like a three or four quid for that, upwards of about £100 plus for Sergeant Seymour, which is a rather difficult game to get. Uh, but yeah, so this one is, like I said, like Bomb Jack. So yeah, place just like Bomb Jack. Just looks nicer, sounds nicer than the Amsterdam version of Bomb Jack. What does it? The Amsterdam version of Bomb Jack's actually not a bad game. I think it was a special version. But yeah, you go up and again, if you, you, you get the fruit in any particular sequence, I think it's fruit you pick up, you get more points. I think you can jump on the baddies on the way down, do all that stuff and you get to the next level. But yeah, it's a very well presented game. I quite like it. I'm not sure if all the Seymour games kind of are clones of other famous games. So I've not played any others to be fair. But again, yeah, like I said, this is probably the more cheaper Seymour game. But to be honest with you, it's great value for money. Seymour's first movie role is a Super Seymour. He's got special powers to clear the world of toxic wastes and evil mutants. Brilliant platform action. Love how they kind of self-congratulate. Um, with stunning animated cartoon graphics, fast action and stupidly addictive. Mega boost powers. Cute, cuddly and... For say cockalicious. Cockalicious. James Leach, your Sinclair. Yeah, it, uh, it's good. It's good. It's probably the best game out of this bunch for me. The final game is a game from Nick over at CPC Game Reviews. Um, there's two variants to this. Now, I've got both variants on the Sinclair Spectrum. Um, the first variant was withdrawn from sale and then replaced with this one. Now, the game itself is the game I've got running on the Sinclair Spectrum. It's called... I'll get it out of the old case a minute. It just saves any glare, really, doesn't it? called The Race Against Time. Now this game was developed uh, for the charity um, called Sport Aid back in 1988. And that's the one that uh, Tears of Fears rehashed their song. Everybody Wants to Run the World. Good song actually. I remember this quite well. This game I hadn't played before though to be fair until I loaded it up and played it on the Amstrad. Uh, again a game by the Oliver Twins. You got to go to six continents, use your flame. Looks a bit like the Olympic torch to, to light, which looks like the Olympic flame, really. So yeah, it's kind of a, a bit of a collect em up. It's quite a basic game, to be fair. And there's always levels that you get to that have like snow. As soon as you go on them, you die. I don't quite understand what that's about. Music by Peter Gabriel. Games about frontiers, and I think it was rehashed. Yeah, by David Whittaker. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not a great game, but again, it's got nice graphics, but every level seems to be devoid of any action. So yeah, just pick stuff up, trans, transport between levels. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a lot to talk about, but yeah, this is the uh, Jesse Owens cover. Uh, the later cover I will show in later episodes, or the earlier cover I will show in later episodes. You know what I mean, but yeah, these games, they just, they are struggle to play. They're not that great. Yeah, so that's that one. Now, the bonus game is one of the games that I showed you in the previous video, but this one is complete. Uh, and that is Jet Bike Simulator. Um, now, you didn't get a lot in the cases, to be fair, but to find them in their complete form, though, is extremely difficult, especially one element of it. Now, these games are just, I think they're expanded versions of games that they already released. So, for example, you've got Pro... BMX simulator, I think, and this Pro Jet Bike Simulator, which is just expand, expansive, expanded on the original games. Now inside there, here you get the poster. Got to be careful now. Little bits fall over the bloody floor. Yes, he's done it. Every video he drops something on the floor, and he has done it again. There we go. So we've got a poster. This sometimes you you'd be lucky to get this in the box. Sometimes you're not. I've had them before, I think, I've had the, the poster, but never had it with the thing I've just thrown on the floor. Oh, that is a sticker. Seldom do you see the sticker. So yeah, that is a complete copy of the game. 
yeah, you done me a great solid there, didn't Nick? So thank you very much, mate, for this. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's what I've got in this particular video to show you. Again, like I said, nothing amazing. Um, highlights for me definitely would be Super Seymour and Quick Snacks. And a guilty pleasure would be the Hit Squad. Not because of its name, because it's actually not a bad little game. What games do you remember picking up when you was a young lad from the local news agents? Or wherever you bought your budget games from? I say thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys again real soon. Yeah, take care and bye for now. Thank you.